Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today is a stressful day, but a very exciting day, because I'm leaving for Florida tomorrow. So, I think I have something that's actually going to be pretty useful. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about tools. Now, tools over time wear out, right, and they'll get stiff. Like, for example, this is a nice, you know, loose pair of dikes. Whereas this one is you know not so loose and is a little bit more difficult to use okay whereas with this one you know you let go pull the handle forward it's real easy real loose and easy to use so today I'm gonna be going over how to make them go from this to this so stay tuned for that okay so the main idea here to get your tools feeling like this is you're gonna need WD-40 okay this is the non aerosol WD-40 but <clears throat> as most people know, there's more to it than just, you know, spraying some WD-40 on it and it magically works. Okay, so how these tools are put together is you can probably see there in the middle there's like a little rivet. Okay, it's kind of like a bearing in a vehicle. You can see it move back and forth. If that bearing gets, gets like bad grease in it, bad lube in it, and it's getting to where it's seizing up, basically you're going to have to loosen up that bearing again. Okay, and a lot of people will do this a lot to try to loosen it up. And that's part of it. That's part of it. But if you just sit here and do this while it's dry, you're basically not doing anything. You're still running a dry bearing. Okay? So this needs to be nice and lubricated and loose for you to get this result. Okay? Now, I have the same thing here with uh, what, what electricians call a pair of clines or side cutters. As you can see, these move nice and, nice and uh, free, right? See it falls right down. Whereas these, sorry, are like super stiff. Okay, so if I try to pull them back, they're like that. They don't fall down on their own. Whereas these fall down on their own. Because that bearing is nice and loose. Almost like a brand new pair. So today we're going to be fixing these two tools right here. Maybe a couple others. I don't know. And I wish showing you exactly how I get them back to where they need to be. Okay, so basically the first thing you want to do is, this is the non-aerosol WD-40. You can use the other one. This one just doesn't make quite as big of a mess. So, basically you want to just get it in all the little cracks that you can. So, for example, with these clines, there's this little groove right here. That is a great entry point for WD-40. Then, after it's in there, you want to sit and work these back and forth. Okay, sit and work them back and forth. Make sure you hear that knocking noise. That's how you know you're hitting the rivets stopping points. Okay. Get it back and forth. Look at that. See that right there coming out? That's all that old grease I was talking about earlier. That's what you want to look for. Okay. Now you can see they're starting to fall back down already. And this is an extremely old pair. So grab you something. Uh, I've got some tissues up here, but you can use napkins, rags, whatever. You see that's all that old goo and gunk that I've sprayed out of there. Now I'm going to go in from the other side. Going from the back side of the bearing. As you can see someone has beaten the crap out of the side of the bearing. So it's tightened up. We need to get it nice and loose again. So we're going to work it a little bit more. Try to see if we can, can't. Look at that. There's still more oozing out. So we're going to see if we cannot work all of that out. And work in our new WD-40. And look at that now. And you can see all that that we got out of the brown stuff. That is all of the old <coughs> lubricant that was in there. And we just wiped that off with a rag. And now we have two pairs of well-functioning clods. So these aren't going to make that tangy sound because they're, I guess, different. But there was even some on the back side there. I just wiped it off. That's how dirty my napkin is from all that that we got off. Um, but yeah. So, And the more you work them, the more you're probably, like, whenever you go to actually use the tool, you may still see some more creep out of there. That's good, though. That's what you want to see. So that, that's exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to do the same thing with these. Except with these, it's a little bit different, okay, because these have a different head. But as you can see, there's an entry point right there with the two pieces of meat. That's where you want to go. You want to try to get in the entry points. So the two pieces of meat and then get on the back side. 
okay? And then just work it back and forth. Oh wow, look at that. Already. See, and you want to work it until you see the old gunk coming out. So, right there, you can see the old gunk coming out. So, this is really good if you do a lot of, like, if you go to a lot of pawn shops to buy tools. This is really good for that, because I actually got this pair of dikes at a pawn shop a while back. They've always been kind of crappy. I actually found this pair. Um, I don't remember exactly where I found them, but I ended up finding them. And I was like, okay, I don't need these anymore. But, it is always good to have, you know, good tools that work well. So, you know, these might be, you know, 30-year-old dikes, but they work like they're brand new. That's what you want, y'all. It don't matter how old something is. If it works good, it works good. You know what I mean? So, as you can see, I had some more darker stuff come out of that. It doesn't, I mean, the color I, doesn't really matter. I guess it just depends on what it's been through. To be honest, will depend on what comes out of it. And I've still got stuff coming out of the clients, too. Might be able to see that. I don't know if you can. But I've still got stuff coming out of the clients, too. So, so what I did is I opened it up. And there's like a little, tiny little crack right there. I sprayed some WD-40 in that. That's doing wonders right now. Like I said, this is a very old pair of dikes. I just, I, I, like I said, I found these in a pawn shop. I paid a dollar for them. And I used them for a little while until I found those. And after I found those, I was like, wow, these things work great. But yeah, as you can see, now they're working a lot better than they were. Maybe not quite as good as the Matt Cohen's. But, of course, this is a Stanley $15 pair, and that's probably like about a $40 or $50 pair of dykes. So, I mean, you're looking at price difference, quality difference, and all that. But, for a $15 pair of dykes to work as good as a new can, or a new a new can. This, this comes in a can, guys. Uh, to work as good as about a, about a new pair, I'll say this works pretty well. And as you guys can see, I've still got gunk coming out of there. Like I said, just work it. I mean, you may just end up working it all out as you use them, but that WD-40 is in there. It's going to work its way through, and that's basically how you're going to be able to restore your tools, guys. So, Alright, guys. So, I hope this helps some of you that have, like, old tools that you love using. You love having them around, but they've become seized up over the years. I hope this helped you to free them up, and if it didn't, maybe you'll find something else out here on the wide world of YouTube that will help you out. Anyways, guys, with that being said, I've got a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. So I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, why not go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week.